crops don't normally grow all that well in northern Ontario, but this one certainly seemed to be flourishing. Police executing a search warrant near Timmins found 18,000 marijuana plants growing in perfectly straight rows. It is one of the biggest grow-op busts in Canadian history, with police estimating the pot's value at more than $20 million. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration says grow-ops across Canada and in all 50 states have been fueled by marijuana seeds from a Vancouver dealer. Mark Emery is his name, and he faces serious trafficking charges in the United States where he could get a life sentence if he's extradited. Emery fully admits to selling seeds over the Internet, but he claims he didn't keep the $5 million the DEA says he profited. So where did all the money go? Global National's Jazz Joe Hall has the surprising answer one that stretches all the way to Parliament Hill. The Prince of Pot returned to his court today. Fresh from being released from prison, Mark Emery visited his marijuana seed shop. Emery has become such a symbol among the pot set, he's even signing t-shirts. While his store does sell magazines and hemp clothing, the vast majority of his wealth comes from internet seed sales, totaling five million dollars. But as a person like me, who keeps nothing, I clearly have benefited personally less than many, many other people who sell seeds, who keep all this money and buy goods and assets and store money offshore. The DEA alleges the $5 million are proceeds of crime. Emery sat down with Global National to crunch some of the numbers. He says half the money went to pay seed wholesalers for stock. Then he paid himself a salary up to $350,000 a year, which was taxed. The remaining dollars, he says, went to fund marijuana legalization efforts around the world, court costs for activists, and ballot initiatives in the U.S. His goal, he says, was to bring a business plan to pot culture. My manifesto has been clear uh, that I developed a retail revolution so that we could earn lots of money to fund a peaceful revolution that would change the way the world thinks about marijuana. I would legalize this and I would tax the living hell out of it. Those dollars helped Emory fund this marijuana conference, which included Vancouver's mayor, Larry Campbell. Cost $34,000. It's his political involvement, he believes, that's led to the U.S. laying charges. In fact, Emory donated $9,400 to the NDP with his marijuana seed kingdom. In fact, NDP leader Jack Layton appeared on Emory's pot TV, calling marijuana a wonderful substance. As you can see, they must be frightened to death that people like Jack Layton would come to my home and ask for my support. Not me asking for their support, but they coming to my home and asking my support. That people on city council, that mayors of city will come to my conferences and make their pronouncements. This frightens the United States. They see that this person is having an influence. It's not about marijuana. Besides his salary, Emery says all the money went to pay for activism. He kept none of it. He may have wished he had. With extradition, he faces hefty legal bills. In Vancouver, this is Global's Jazz Johal reporting. The Prince of Pot is out of jail, having posted $50,000 in bail money. Mark Emery, the leader of the B.C. Marijuana Party, was arrested last week in Halifax at the request of American authorities. If extradited and convicted, he could face 10 years in jail. A week in the slammer hasn't softened the Prince of Pot's resolve. Out on bail, the Americans want him back behind bars in their country. But Mark Emery, on the left with the manager of the B.C. Marijuana Party, seems to have spent his time in solitude wisely, already formulating some key points in his extradition defense, including Ottawa's apparent complicity in his marijuana seed operation. The government of Canada knew I was selling marijuana seeds. The income tax department, the Canadian Revenue Agency, gladly took $380,000 from me in personal income taxes over the last five years, and they knew that this was from the sale of marijuana seeds. They were anxious to get this money. They were glad to get it. They knew it came from marijuana seeds. They said that didn't concern them they and they welcomed the money Emery says it was his high-profile in-your-face approach to marijuana activism and the sale of seeds to the US that made him a target for the DEA it's alleged he sold seeds to undercover American police they asked for a warrant and Vancouver police raided his seed store last Friday arresting some protesters Emery was arrested in Halifax and brought back to Vancouver 
In court Tuesday, the lawyer for the American authorities opposing his bail claimed over $5 million passed through Emery's two business accounts. I never aggrandized myself. I didn't use this money. I never travel. I don't own anything. I own no cars, stocks, bonds, offshore money. I don't own homes. I have no personal property of any kind. I've never kept any of this money ever. And I will be able to show you that I have given millions and millions away to worthy causes, uh, causes that oftentimes involved uh, leaders of political parties. As a condition of your bail, you can't sell seeds anymore. And what happens to the movement if you can't raise money? The movement will have to learn to cope without my uh, generosity and largesse. And I hope the movement will now uh, offer to compensate me with kindness and financial donations from my legal counsel because I have done nothing but put out my entire adult life for people in need and distress. And I hope they respond in kind to me now when I am clearly in distress. Canadian police arrested Emery for the DEA. The question now, will our courts extradite him to the U.S. where he could face a minimum 10 years in jail? Emery says he's prepared to be a marijuana martyr, but the prospect of going to an American prison frightens him. His extradition hearing begins in three weeks. For supporters of Mark Emery, it's become an issue of Canadian sovereignty and a battle to protect the so-called Prince of Pot from being extradited to the U.S. for selling marijuana seeds over the Internet. But to U.S. officials fighting the war on drugs, Mark Emery is a criminal who is a danger to America. In the growing of thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of marijuana plants in America, thus involved in the allegedly in the illegal distribution of marijuana in this country. He is a drug dealer. For the past decade, Mark Amory has been publicly flaunting his disregard for marijuana laws and working to legalize the drug that many regard as a benign substance. I think he is sincerely trying to change what he considers to be a foolish and counterproductive law. And, and uh, uh, he has engaged in civil disobedience to do that, and he's taken his lumps. Those lumps could be a lot harder to bear now that American officials want to prosecute Mark Emery. And history has shown that when the U.S. wants to extradite someone from Canada, they usually get their way. Few would argue with the extradition of young killers Atif Raffae and Sebastian Burns, nor even Playboy fraud artist Christopher Rokencourt, who scammed over a million dollars from wealthy Americans. I don't know exactly what will happen when we go back there. there. But consider the relentless pursuit of Alan Richardson, the unassuming West Vancouver man and Triumph researcher, ordered back to the States to serve the rest of his time for a $20 drug sale 30 years after the offense. Well, this is a good example of the complete lack of perspective in these things. I mean, what is the harm being done? I mean, if Americans want to who, uh, say marijuana is a bad thing, that, that's fine, but they're, they're treading on thin ice. But treading with massive political clout and with no hesitation to use it against Canadian citizens like Mark Emery. 90% of his uh, seed business comes from down south. He knows that, and he knows how draconian their rules are. Yet he continued to sell seeds down there uh, anyways. Uh, he rolled the dice and he lost. I think they should stay in their own country. This is Canada. That's the United States. Keep your own laws down there. I don't agree with he, what he's done, but if he hasn't broken a law in this country, I think it's kind of scary if we start extradating people that aren't guilty of a crime here, but are guilty elsewhere. <laughs> Mark Emery may have scores of supporters on this side of the border, but he also has a lot of opponents. And it's yet to be played out whether Emery's politics will be a match for the war on drugs. And they're willing to pursue something that's costing billions of dollars, getting them nothing in return, making them the laughing stock of the rest of the world. And uh, they just will not take, take the evidence the rest of the world has looked at and said, we shouldn't do this.